Your mother may have told you that you were her little gift from heaven. However true that is, you and I didn't just drop out of the sky. We were born into a family with its own history. Some of it wonderful and maybe some of it terrible or disappointing. Whatever God put into making you your unique self has been influenced by the heritage of your birth family and or the love family that raised you. Recently, I've been reminded once again that I was born into a family with a history that goes back generations. The Mount Moriah Church in Tyler County, West Virginia, provided me with the opportunity to preach in the very pulpit where my great-grandfather had preached. Outside the church building, my grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-aunts and uncles had their bodies buried. With other family members, I visited each of their graves the day before preaching there. For me, my family history and my faith story are deeply entwined. In this Sunday's Old Testament reading, Joshua reminds Israel of the arc of their family's faith and history of covenant with God. In the same place God had made a covenant with their ancestor Abraham, and again God covenanted with Abraham's grandson Jacob, Joshua asked the people whether they wanted to also enter into the same covenant and worship the Lord of their ancestors. We don't inherit a relationship with God like we inherit property. Each generation, after considering what God has done for their family and how their family responded, must decide for themselves whether they will move forward by themselves entering into covenant with God or go the way of the world. As Joshua said, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord." Unquote. This is the decision that each generation must make for itself. But for today's generation to make an informed choice, their elders must have passed on to them the teachings and stories of the covenant. This is how that responsibility is described in Psalm 78. My people hear my teaching, listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands." Unquote. But the Gentiles in Jesus' day did not have these generational stories and teachings. Quite the opposite. In the Greek culture, prevalent in Thessalonica, for example, their mythology emphasized the belief that when you die, you die. You go to an underworld and are permanently without thoughts or feelings. End of story. There was no hope of ever being reunited with a loved one. So, in the oldest book of the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians, Paul reminded them that the lessons of Greek mythology had been turned on their head. Death had been defeated. Jesus died and rose again and has ascended into heaven. Not only that, but all those who are, quote, dead in Christ, unquote, will be with Jesus either when Christ returns or we die and go to be with the Lord. Paul said, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, who have no hope. If our family has a faith history, we must decide whether we will choose the Lord. If our family lived without hope, 
like they had in Thessalonica, we can be the Abraham of our family, the first generation to covenant with God. But just as Joshua did not sugarcoat the cost of commitment, Jesus made clear that our covenant commitment wasn't simply mouthing words or an instantaneous moment of faith. In the parable of the five foolish bridesmaids and the five wise bridesmaids, Jesus challenges his covenant people to be ready. My mother used to joke about the defensive captain of an American football team. As the offense offense stepped up to the line of scrimmage, the defensive captain yelled, watch out for a kick, a pass, or a run. Each day when we wake up, we have no idea which way our lives might turn. Jesus talks about the foolish bride maids that only brought enough oil in their lamps to be ready if the bridegroom came right away. The others brought enough oil to hang in there for the long haul. Jesus told this story to illustrate what he had said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. And I might add, or on what day you will go to be with the Lord. We have no idea how long it will be before we either die and go to be with the Lord, or we reach the end of time and the Lord returns to gather us to himself. A covenant commitment may be but for a breath, as it was for the thief on the cross beside Jesus, who the very day he professed faith in Jesus went to be with Jesus in paradise. Or we might have a longer walk on this side of glory, having made a commitment to God in our generation and passing on to who knows how many generations, the stories and teachings of what it means to walk with God in God's care and with God's protection. Are you an Abraham, the first in your line to enter a relationship with God through Christ? Are you a Joshua, making the same covenant with God, the God whose stories and teachings were passed on to you, and now pass, passing them on to the next generation? Are you prepared to live into that covenant, whether your earthly life is just a a moment or stretches on for years? I made my commitment to God in Christ over 50 years ago. (laughs) I had an inspiring family history upon which to build my faith. I've tried to pass on the stories and teachings of the Christian faith. By God's grace, I try to walk with him each day in a way that will honor the cloud of witnesses who have gone to be with the Lord before me and invite the generations that follow to, quote, taste and see that the Lord is good, unquote. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve.